What's up, people? Welcome back. Hopefully you guys are doing well, and thanks again for joining me. Today we're doing another lighting cinematography practice at home. But first, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys for watching and commenting on last week's video. Um, I got some really nice messages from everyone. Um, people left some really awesome comments as far as their own experiences. So I just wanted to be able to continually create an open uh, comment section where people feel comfortable expressing themselves. So please always feel comfortable to comment on any video. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, feelings. I'm always open to reading them and providing my own comment back as well. So if you find these videos to be beneficial to you, please hit that subscribe button below, hit the like button, comment. It means a lot to me to see this channel grow and be able to build a bigger community for everyone. So today's video is another cinematography practice at home and we're gonna be going from this shot to this shot and everything in between. So hopefully we could be pretty quick today. I just wanna run through each of the individual lighting techniques that were used to accomplish the final look of this shot. So to start with the basics, we shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2. We paired that with the DZO Pictor zoom lens, the 20 to 55. We shot at a wide open f-stop of 2.8, 800 ISO, and 6500 Kelvin color temperature. Real quick, the reason why I went 6500 Kelvin is because I wanted a warmer looking image. All right, so looking at this first image here, you'll notice that it is extremely dark. There's really nothing to it except for this lamp that we added, and we added the Aperture B7C bulb at 4000 Kelvin color temperature at about 20% intensity, so it wasn't overblowing the image. Next thing we did was introduce some backlight and I wanted to recreate a sunset kind of golden hour look inside of my apartment and I closed all of the blinds to make sure it was kind of blacked out and there wasn't any additional light coming in because during the time of day that I was shooting wasn't golden hour and it was pretty much high noon so the color temperature that was coming in through the windows was not the warm golden look I was looking for it was a bit cooler which you'll notice coming up so what I did first to introduce a backlight was take my Nanlite Forza 500 put a Fresnel attachment with the barn doors and I shine this directly on the back wall just to create a nice little streak of light against that wall. And how I accomplished this was taking those barn doors and creating a very closed window of light. So setting the light to 10% completely got rid of that problem of having a huge hotspot. Since it was at 10%, it wasn't very intense, but it created enough interest in the back wall to separate some of the light and dark from the shadows on the wall and where the light was coming from, which kind of, I was mimicking the sun at golden hour. Additionally, I added a orange gel to the light to kind of help emphasize that golden hour look. Since I don't have a regular CTO gel, I used the Roscoe Color Effects using the Bastard Amber Gel, which is essentially a CTO or a very warm color. So shot number three is introducing more backlight. So what I did here was take my Nanlite Mix Panel 150, I set it to the soft setting so it wasn't a very hard light. I set this to 2700 Kelvin because this matched pretty perfectly with that color gel that I was using and I shine this a little bit more upward toward the ceiling just to create a little bit more backfill and introduce a little bit more of that warm light instead of it just being that little streak coming from the 500. What this did was just create a little bit more ambient light inside of the room, which helped lift a lot of the shadows, but also help emphasize enough light coming from the back to help sell the idea that this is a sunset look. So for the next shot, remember how I said that if I were to keep the blinds open, the time of day that we were shooting wasn't gonna match the color temperature of the warm golden hour look. So now if you look right here in this little window between the kitchen and the living room, you'll see that there's this little blue area that isn't the same color as this golden hour look. And the reason is because the window that's inside the kitchen doesn't have any blinds to it. And instead of blacking it out, what I did was take a Nanlite Pavo tube, set it to 2700 Kelvin, shined it directly at the ceiling to create a nice warm bounce, which filled in the rest of that wall area that was blue to a nice warmer tone now, which matched the rest of the vibe. So you guys probably noticed that we did a lot of backlighting here to create that nice golden hour look. And I didn't really do anything on the front side key. And this is where we start to introduce that light now. So what I did for this key light was use that lamp as a motivating source. What I did was take a Nanlite Forza 300, which was set to 5600 Kelvin, and I shined that directly through a six by unbleached muslin. The reason why I chose to go through an unbleached muslin is because instead of going through a silk, which is a white fabric and it doesn't really change any color temperature, shooting through an unbleached muslin takes that 5600 Kelvin light and warms it up a bit. And considering that our light bulb was at 4000 Kelvin, 
the 5600 might have been a little bit too cool for that light to match well. So shooting through an unbleached muslin warmed up the light a lot, which kind of helped reflect the idea that it was golden hour and the light was bouncing from the backlight to the, to the walls to create a really nice soft key light. And I really think this lended well with the overall image and just helping sell that warm feel. And as you'll notice, as soon as the key light is introduced, it brightens the image tremendously. Now, depending on the look that you're going for, this might be a perfect vibe for you, or it might be too bright because you were going for that moodier look. But for this particular scene, I just wanted to stay a little bit brighter. So introducing that key light fit perfectly for the vibe that I was going for. But the one thing I noticed was it was still a little bit too bright on my face, a little bit too harsh. So something I learned from my gaffer is to take a two by three silk, put it behind the muslin and in front of your key light and place it directly where your face is being illuminated. So what I did was take my two by three silk, attached it to the C-stand and placed it exactly where the light was hitting my face. So the reason why I did this is because the key light is now being double diffused on my face, which helps soften it and helps reduce some of that intensity on my face without reducing the intensity in the rest of the key light area and the rest of the frontal area. So the last thing I did was introduce a black V-flat board to just increase some contrast and some shadows. It didn't do too much. If I had some more neg, I would have wrapped it around the front side a little bit more, but I think this increased the contrast a little bit more and just created a little bit more of a moody image, which I think lended well to the overall brightness and um, helped tone it down a little bit more. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit today on how to recreate a sunset look inside your house when it's not sunset. Um, I find that these practices are extremely vital and so important for me and hopefully you guys found some benefit in it as well because there's so many things that I learned while practicing that I didn't even think of until I actually have to figure out a problem or figure out a solution to that problem. And being able to continually practice like this as a cinematographer will only help you improve your craft, improve your speed, your efficiency, and be able to communicate on set with your gaffer and grip because you have experience, you know what you want and you've done it before. So being able to effectively communicate with your team is vital to efficiency, to production, and to show the director and the producer that you know what you're doing. So that's it. Thank you guys again for joining me. Again, if you found this video to be useful and beneficial to you, please hit the subscribe button, like, comment below. Check me out on Instagram, at Carlos Stiggs. And yeah, appreciate you guys. Until next time, I'll see you later. Have a great day.